Well, hello there. It's me. For the second time today. If you do not know, I do do two videos pretty much every single day. And I know a lot of you struggle to get notifications. First of all, I'm going to say this. If you have notifications turned on on YouTube, but notifications turned off in your phone, in your settings, then that will override the fact that you've got notifications turned on in the YouTube app. So if you struggle to get notifications, first of all, do check your settings in your actual phone to make sure notifications are allowed. A mistake that even I make a lot of the time. Anyway, I digress. Let's get straight into the meat and potatoes and talk about Brent Kopacker. Now, I did a live couple of hours ago and i was surprised that a lot of people didn't know who that was and i'm guessing that there'll be people watching this video now who perhaps do not know who he is so before we go on i'm just going to bring your attention to this article now this guy is a decorated army veteran from pullman sufferer of PTSD for a period of approximately 16 years who was fatally shot by SWAT teams in December on December 15th in Pullman. Now, what this basically was, this was a situation that what they're saying is it escalated from something and he had he was on the on the sort of around the 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 Washington State University complex and he had said that he was going to shoot his housemates escalated escalated there was a breach by SWAT they they, they shot the guy but since then there's been a lot of speculation surrounding a possible connection between him and Brian Koberger. Some people have speculated that perhaps this is the guy that Koberger was looking to frame. Perhaps this is someone who Brian Koberger manipulated to do this for him. Did Brian Koberger drive him over there and get him to do it and then drove him away? And look, this video isn't about saying anyone is right or anyone is wrong. Please do not think that. Over here, we listen to everybody and everyone has a right to their own opinion. And my opinion is my opinion only. Some people share it. Some people do not. And I never think that I can 100% be right. And when I talk about this today, I could indeed be so far off the mark that the mark is a dot to me. Okay? But what I'm going to talk about today is the fact that I do not believe that this guy had anything to do with the Idaho murders, the Moscow, Idaho murders. I do not believe this guy had anything to do with it, anything whatsoever. Many people have turned around and said the fact that this guy has got PTSD, he was someone who could have been manipulated. And I will say to people like I did last night, those of you who think that, you need to go and learn about PTSD and what PTSD truly is. Now, with respect of my knowledge with PTSD, so you guys don't think that I'm just talking out of my backside, for those of you who don't know, we are in a military zone. We live within a military zone next to one of the biggest military bases in the UK. I can literally look out of my window and see the main gates of the base. Our family are military. We are surrounded by people who suffer from PTSD, complex PTSD. I speak to them. We can have conversations with them. And I've had conversations about this very thing. 
Now, is it possible that he could have been manipulated? Of course it is. Of course anybody, anybody can be manipulated by the right person, and we see it all the time, whether it be relationship manipulation, whether it be adults to children, you know, even parental manipulation. It exists. It happens. You know, workplace manipulation. Anybody is open to manipulation, and some people think that there's that, that they're not being manipulated and they are being manipulated so it it happens but we can't blame things like PTSD now the fact that this guy had suffered from PTSD for 16 years does not put him in a category that he can automatically be considered as likely took part in this situation PTSD is about an enhanced fight or flight response. It can also be completely the opposite, where they have an active focus on avoiding situations that they feel may be dangerous. This is through seeing something or being subjected to something over a period of time that a that alters the way the brain works with regards to its fear response. That's what PTSD is. Now, with respect of this decorated army vet, now people have said about the army weapon that was used. He was in the army. He wasn't a Marine. He, had, he, he was awarded the Purple Heart for bravery. And... Every single thing that's said about him is glowing. And the elements that they talk about is of, with his PTSD are very, very common. But this is something else. I think that people are looking this potentially the wrong way because I think that the only thing that he could have in connection with the Moscow-Idaho case is that his knowledge that it happened and thinking that someone was out there, that could have triggered a PTSD response that led to what happened. Does that make sense? To think that someone had entered a room and taken the lives of four students in this same kind of situation that he lived in himself in a very similar set up if you like with roommates and in a property that was shared could that have triggered a ptsd response i think that is far more likely than to believe that this guy had been manipulated and used as a weapon in this story and again that is purely my opinion and I would like to hear your opinion. If you're not 100% familiar with the situation, please do go and check it out. Go and check out what happened and do do your homework on this guy yourself and see what you think. And then please do come back and, um, and comment down below because I would be interested in hearing everybody else's take, whether you do indeed agree with me, um, whether you feel that there is a real strong possibility that he was indeed involved because I think from what I've seen, there are people who do believe that and I'd be interested to understand what makes you think that. And I'm going to leave you with this because this is why I think people think that. And it goes back to the video that I did earlier today. So if you haven't watched that video, go and watch that after this one, because from what I can see, the time frame with which these murders took place, and it's not the 4 a.m. to 4.25, it's more like the 4.10 to 4.20 or 4.18, if you like. So potentially an eight-minute action window, if you like. And we've got to ask ourselves, was this someone who was skilled in this? They had done it before, or was it someone who had help? Because I struggle to think that someone who was a complete virgin to all of it, had never done it before, had no help, no assistance, nothing whatsoever, went in with this incel complex, what people are saying, with this blind rage that they are able to pull this off in this length of time. Yes, mistakes were made, but were mistakes made because... 
they'd got off it before. And it made them lazy and sloppy. Let me know down below. I'll be very interested to hear your thoughts on this. And I'll catch you all in the next one.